thing is, the Democratic Party has a real problem because they're losing people like me. And I'm, it, my, even my mom, mom is in her 60s, so is my dad. They're losing those Democrats. I'm saying it. All right, but, uh, Dark Brandon is live. We're going to move on to Dark Brandon, uh, where he will be saying some really scary things, okay? Uh, Biden is expected to speak at 8 p.m. Obviously, the, 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 you know, the White House is live, but that doesn't mean Dark Brandon is there yet. He is notoriously late. Unlike me, I served the top of the hour ad break exactly, exactly on time, okay? Right on time, right on cue at the top of the hour. There's a three-minute ad break. If you want this uninterrupted Biden special, okay, then all you need to do is subscribe for $6 over free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. You can use it on your fa uh, favorite broadcast. There. Hopefully that's me. He was almost an hour late to his three minute speech this morning. Yeah, he's never on time. He's so gross. Like he is so notoriously late all the time, dude. It's crazy. Amira Lynx, thank you for the 10 community gifted subs. Oh, my fellow Americans. Oh, he is on time. Three minute ad break now. Twitch Primes are free or the temperature in our politics. And to remember, while we may disagree, we what? are not enemies. We're neighbors, we're friends, co-workers, citizens, and most importantly, we're our fellow Americans. We must stand together. Yesterday's shooting at Donald Trump's rally in Pennsylvania calls on all of us to take a step back. Take stock of where we are. It's not live, How it's pre-recorded. Thankfully, former Trump is not seriously injured. I spoke with him last Former night. Former Trump? Grateful. He's doing well, and Jill and I keep him and his family in our prayers. We also extend our deepest condolences to the family of the victims who was killed. Corey was a husband, a father, a volunteer firefighter, a hero, sheltering his family from those bullets. We should all hold his family and all those injured in our prayers. Earlier today, I spoke about an ongoing investigation. We do not know the motive of the shooter yet. We don't know his opinions or affiliations. We don't know whether he had help or support or if he communicated with anyone else. Law enforcement professionals, as I speak, are investigating those questions. Tonight, I want to speak to what we do know. A former president was shot, an American citizen killed, while simply exercising his freedom to support the candidate of his choosing. We cannot. We must not go down this road in America. We've traveled before throughout our history. Violence has never been the answer, whether it's with members of Congress of both parties being targeted and shot, or a violent mob attacking the Capitol on January 6th. It's not pre-recorded. brutal attack on the spouse of former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, or information and intimidation on election officials, or the kidnapping plot against the sitting governor, or an attempted assassination on Donald Trump. There is no place in America for this kind of violence, or for any violence ever, period. No exceptions. We can't allow this violence to be normalized. It is you live, know, it's not pre-recorded. This country has gotten very heated. It's time to cool it down. We all have a responsibility to do that. Yes, we have deeply felt strong disagreements. The stakes in this election are enormously high. I've said it many times that the choice in the select we make in this election is going to shape the future of America and the world for decades to come. I believe that with all my soul. I know that millions of my fellow Americans believe it as well. <clears throat> and some have a different view as to the direction our country should take. Disagreement is inevitable in American democracy. It's part of human nature. But politics must never be a literal battlefield, a God forbid, a killing field. I believe politics ought to be an arena for peaceful debate, to pursue justice, to make decisions guided by the Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. We stand for an America, not of extremism and fury, but of decency and grace. All of us now face the time of testing as the election approaches. And the higher the stakes, the more fervent the passions become. This places an added burden on each of us to ensure that no matter how strong our convictions, we must never descend into violence. The Republican convention will start tomorrow. I have no doubt they'll criticize my record and offer their own vision for it's this It's a country. threat. 
I'll be traveling this week making the case for our record <laughs> and the vision, my vision of the country, our vision. I'll continue to speak out strongly for our democracy, stand up for our Constitution. He's about to say, don't, don't show law, up to work tomorrow. To call for action at the ballot box. No violence on our streets. That's how democracy should work. We debate and disagree. We compare and contrast the character of the candidates, the records, the issues, the agenda, the vision for America. But in America, we resolve our difference at the battle box. Battle box! You know, that's how we do it, at the battle box, not with bullets. At the battle box! The power to change America should always rest in the hands ah! of the people, not in the hands of the would-be assassin. You know, the path forward to the competing visions of the campaign should always be resolved peacefully. Us? Not through acts of violence. You know, we're blessed to live in the greatest country on earth, and I believe that with every soul, every uh. power of my being. So tonight, I'm asking every American to recommit to make America so, make America, <laughs> think about it. What's made America so special? Here in America, everyone must be treated with dignity and respect, and hate must have no safe harbor. Here in America, we need to get out of our silos uh, where we only listen to those with whom we agree, where misinformation is rampant, where foreign actors fan the flames of our division to shape the outcomes consistent with their interests, not ours. Let's remember, here in America, while unity is the most elusive of goal goals right now, nothing is more, more important for us now than standing together. We can do this. You know, from the beginning, our founders understood the power of passion. So they created a democracy that gave reason and balance a chance to prevail over brute force. That's the American we must be. Uh. An American democracy where arguments are made in good faith. An American democracy where the rule of law is respected. An American democracy where decency, dignity, fair play aren't just quaint notions, but living, breathing realities. We owe that to those who come uh, before us, it. to those who gave their lives for this country. We owe, that, we owe that to ourselves. We owe it to our children and our grandchildren. Look, let's never lose sight it's of who live, we are. It's live. It's not a recording. Let's he remember wouldn't flub we are this the hard United if it was a States of America. One. There is nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Bro. Bro said battle. Oh, oh my God. He said battle. He, he said battle box. He smirked like he nailed that too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so here's the thing. And that's the only thing people are going to remember from that is battle yeah, box. Of course. And he also said yeah. former Trump. So previous reporting on the fact that this was pre-recorded was untrue. Immediately people retracted that statement. It was clearly not pre-recorded. If it was pre-recorded, they would not have allowed this to air. They would have recorded it again. Perhaps it should have been pre-recorded instead of been live because, holy shit, that was a disaster, okay? He cannot sit through a teleprompter read that uh. is approximately, what, three minutes long? Oh, that God. was literally a three-minute teleprompter. So that's insane. That's actually insane. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Before people say, oh my God, like I can see the teleprompter behind his head. They actually did not arrange, his team f***ed him up. They did not arrange the teleprompter appropriately. Normally, you're supposed to line it up with the eyesight of the speaker. I know this because I did this professionally at the Young Turks. If you don't line it up directly with the eyesight of the speaker, because it's supposed to like sit in front of the camera box, usually, okay? And it rolls down. And there's another person controlling the teleprompter with the same speed that the speaker is speaking. Okay? This requires a little bit of skill. It requires a little bit of expertise. It requires good timing. If it goes too fast and the person who is reading the teleprompter is not very good at reading the teleprompter because maybe their brain is leaking out of their goddamn ear, well, you know, you f***ed up. So... It's normal for them to use a teleprompter. All of those like direct addresses from the White House, actually, all of those direct addresses from the White House actually use a teleprompter. That's perfectly normal. Problem is, in this situation, you know, he just could not even read the prompter well enough. I yeah, reading a prompter. I read I read a prompter for all name your prize shows, and I can tell you, uh, I'm really bad at it. And I'm you know I'm about 56 years younger than Biden. <laughs> And uh, 
it's difficult, but um, I'm also not the president of the United States either. So if we can't, if we, if he can't do that, then I don't know what we're doing really, to be honest. I, I really don't. I, I, tr I truly don't. And I can't really stay quiet anymore. I can't really stay quiet. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. This is literally our messaging. He, call, he called me this morning in a state of panic. <laughs> like, uh, he's like, what is going on right now? The Democratic Party is a clown show. And he's the Democratic Party's no, like, most look, loyal soldier. Look, you literally have your, your, your voice of your party trying to articulate your agenda. And every time that voice speaks, people aren't listening to the agenda. They're listening to what is the next word he's going to flub. And then that becomes the headline. It is impossible to campaign and articulate and spread a message. And you cannot have your surrogates do it for you. You cannot have your surrogates do it for you. When you, people don't care about your surrogates, your vice president, Barack Obama, you are at the top of the ticket. And if you can't articulate the message, perception is reality. Whether it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Overreacting, he did fine. Dude, people that are saying overreacting, he did fine. If Donald Trump had that moment, that would be the headline uh, from BuzzFeed down to every single, every single liberal media outlet. This mother tweeted Kofefe one time and that drove the news cycle for a week. Okay. It, 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 look, that drove the news cycle for a week. I bet my soul no headline on mainstream media was BattleBox. Yeah. You want to know why they won't say that? Because Donald Trump. Was attempt Donald Trump was victim to an attempted assassination. So yes, it's old news that Brandon is flubbing. But for those who are watching, for those who are watching to listen to Joe Biden, Austin is absolutely correct. They're not watching to hear what kind of unifying message he puts out. His supporters are watching to see if he is going to be coherent because they love him and they want him to pull through. And his detractors, the people who criticize him, are watching specifically to hear him flub. And he still kept flubbing. That's a normal stutter flub. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. That is a teleprompter he's reading, dumbass. He's not having a normal conversation. And this also doesn't happen. This happens all the time. Like, I, I can't if believe. If it was once in a while, it would I, be fine. It, I, every speech, it happens. I can't believe he's every still speech. going with a, a stutter. The thing is, the Democratic Party has a real problem because they're losing people like me. And I'm, it, my even my mom, mom is 60, in her 60s, so is my dad. They're losing those Democrats. In terms of, yeah, still going to vote for him. I'm still going to vote for him. I'd vote for a dead body over Donald Trump. I, I, I would vote for anything over Donald Trump. I'm still going to vote for him. Yes, but not the issue. When, you're, when your base looks at it, okay, when your base looks at this and, and you're losing your, the confidence of your base, that's not where elections are won and lost. They're Thank won you. between Thank party you. lines on independence and uh, by slim margins. You're talking to two people right now. One person who's not going to vote for Joe Biden no matter what. One person who's going to vote for Joe Biden no matter what. And both people are saying the exact same thing because we're not talking about ourselves. We're talking about the broader electorate. We're talking about people in the margins. People who are like, nah, I don't really care about what the f is going on. Okay. Those people are not going to vote for the cadaver. They've demonstrated that they're not going to vote for the cadaver. Yes. Okay? And, and people, <laughs> Americans are, when, when will they understand that Americans are complacent? They are short-sighted, complacent. They look at the economy. They don't care about anything else. So when you shake the fact that there's going to be some sort of fascism, first of all, no, no, most Americans don't even know what the that means and we are so complacent as a society we don't think it could happen to us we don't think it could happen to us nobody truly believes that it could happen to us so that narrative when you got joe who can't string a few words together they're going to take the guy that they remember all the stimulus checks three or four years ago because everything looks better in the past and people are even are romanticizing covid they're going to vote for that because that's what they, they remember they think positively of that guy because they're looking at this guy up a teleprompter every week now that's also not entirely correct because there's one way and the democratic party knows this there's one way to remind people of how bad donald trump release is another pandemic and how, oh. <laughs> no and how bad they felt under donald trump uh -huh. and that is by having someone who is otherwise inoffensive and regularly competent basically just above average in performance step into the fray as the leader of the democratic party so yes. that people can focus on Trump's insane That's the, rhetoric. Thank you. Thank you. We can't focus on his rhetoric. He's getting 
a free pass because nobody nobody is nobody nobody can listen to what Joe Biden is saying because they don't care. They just want to see him fuck up his speech. <laughs> Who then is on his stepping? Dude, Kamala Harris is literally the vice president. What are you talking about? People act like she's just not there. People act like I've not brought her name up multiple times. It is such a quick swap <laughs> that it could happen so swiftly that you wouldn't even think about it for more than a week. And the clarity is like these just like refuse to hear that. Okay, they act like people aren't saying that. They act like people aren't saying it's Kamala Harris. It's so stupid. I don't understand. And and we talked no, about Kamala this. is not worse than Biden. Kamala is again at least somewhat competent. Okay, it entirely depends on what she says, what she does, how this swap would potentially occur if it were to occur. And you guys are. You guys are just simply operating on, no, she's a black woman. She's not going to win. Okay. The bar is low right now for Joe Biden. It's a 49-51 race currently. Okay. In the, in the national poll. In, in that the, means <laughs> that anyone that can bring even 10 more voters, 20 more voters, a thousand mo vo more voters in key districts would potentially be able to secure the election. You know, okay, it, it, and Kamala Harris is marginally better than Joseph Robinette Biden. Currently, <laughs> internal polling that uh, the Democrats themselves are running shows that Kamala Harris has actually started to beat Donald Trump in the polls. And you know, you know what kills me is that the Democrats are celebrating that Joe Biden has a 51-49 lead in the national poll, a poll that uh, 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 the national poll, the popular vote, a Republican has not won in 20 years. They haven't won. They haven't won the popular like Democrats, twenty years. Democrats, because of the electoral college, because of the electoral college, yeah. Democrats have to win by at least three points, at least minimum three to five points in the national polls to be able to win the election. Yes, yes, and 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 it's not and and it's not and if we look at yeah, the and polls, it's not fifty one forty nine lead yeah. in the vote shares, fifty nine fifty one forty nine lead in chances of winning. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, whatever. Fuck it. I don't it, know. What it, I'm it's still no, no, no. But it still doesn't matter because. That is also pre-shooting of Donald Trump. We're not even talking about post-shooting of Donald Trump. And the fact that and the fact that post-shooting of Donald Trump polls are probably going to be a little bit different because he just won a massive I, amount I, of sympathy. It's so frustrating. It, it's so frustrating because it's like it's like watching football and your quarterback has thrown 50 interceptions <laughs> and there's a backup quarterback that is 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 sitting on the bench that's perfectly capable and you won't put him in the game. It's like we're already down by 40. Who gives a shit? Just put them in. Who it can't get worse. It it's can't like, get worse. No, no, but the thing you is, know what I mean? but the thing is, it's not even that like the situation is like if you were playing against the second team of of like you're a Super Bowl winner, you are coming off the heels of like uh, a potential like Analysts are saying you are slated to wipe the floor with the second team yeah, yeah, yeah. that you're playing against, uh -huh. and you're still playing a close game for no reason no because reason. of your quarterback. Yeah, because no reason at all. No reason at all. Like, it's selfish. <clears throat> it's selfish. And this and 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 I hate to say and, and I'm gonna say this. It's selfish. And people like me, women, are gonna suffer because this guy has too pride to not drop out of the race. And I'm a lifelong Democrat. I voted for all all candidates that have been. Okay, we're gonna our rights are gonna be deprived of us because you won't drop out of the race and you're 81 years old and you may not even see the end of the your second term. You're that goddamn old. Drop the fuck out and put Kamala in so we have a chance. Yeah. Also, beyond that, beyond that, it is really damaging that uh, the Axios reporting that just recently came out mm -hmm. saying that a senior House Democrat openly stated that they're resigning for a second. You know, they're they're getting they're readying themselves for a second Trump term. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden, Joe Biden took down all of their ads. All their ad spend is frozen right now uh -huh. because they don't want to come across as like too incendiary in their rhetoric against Donald Trump. There's an election going on. I don't know if Donald Trump got shot in the ear or if he got shot in the eyeball. OK, you're still running for election. What the are you talking about what you said yesterday about Donald Trump's rhetoric before he got shot at is still the same thing. It is still the reality. Donald Trump is fundraising off of the fact that he got shot and the Democrats are going, oh, we got to do a call for unity. You are trying to lose. That's number one. Number two, the policies have not changed. It's not like 
Donald Trump, it's not like Donald Trump all of a sudden, now that he got whizzed in the ear, is going to come out and be like, I actually want Medicare for all. I've decided that like every Mexican is not a rapist, actually. Every Mexican is great and I want more immigration. Like that's not what's going to happen. Okay. So that doesn't change the narrative. That doesn't change the metrics of what it means for the Democrats to lose in the upcoming election. So if you're a diehard Democrat, you should be looking at the worst political instincts being demonstrated by the campaign right now and going crazy over it. Okay? It's so stupid. Anyway, let's see what the let's see what these dipshits are saying. They're probably going to be like, "Oh, the unification calls were and so it's good." It's been 26 hours since uh, that uh, that assassination and and still there is so much still to learn. Uh, let's talk about the investigation that is ongoing. Seen as Whitney Wilde joins us now with more on what authorities have uncovered so far and what they're still trying to learn. So Whitney, where, where do things stand right now? Well, Anderson, there are many questions to answer. I think notably the Secret Service has not come out to answer those questions. They have not taken questions. There was a press conference earlier today. Notably, the director was not at that press conference, although she had been at previous yeah. similar press conferences. I saw so this. big questions. I hear I saw this reporting as well. Trump was spiritual while shooting says person who spoke to former president. A person who spoke to Trump in the last 12 hours said he was almost spiritual about the situation, and that's totally not normal for him. He thinks he was handed a gift from God. He can't believe it. The person said that Trump is telling his team that they need to unit, uh, they need to do unity at the convention. The convention now becomes more about his courage and resilience, the person said. They want speakers to dial it down, not dial it up. That is actually exactly what the Republicans need to do in order to win back those moderates and independent voters that desperately ran away. It is actually a brilliant political strategy from the Republican Party. And if the Democrats also go along with the unity calls, okay, then all of a sudden they've effectively completely neutralized the only argument they have beyond abortion as to why you should vote for the Democratic Party. Not for like obviously people in this community. I'm talking about dudes living in the suburbs. I'm I'm talking about the Connecticut suburbs that where people live in McMansions, educated white voters that historically have voted for the Republican Party, but didn't vote for the Republican Party last election because they think Trump spells chaos and disorder. Those guys are going to look at the situation and they want Donald Trump to be more moderate. They voted for him in 2020 because Donald Trump was more moderate and they are not 2020, sorry, in 2016, because Donald Trump presented himself as a moderate on a lot of issues and he was an outsider and that's why they willingly voted for him they recognized he was not that person that he claimed to be and was too chaotic and too crazy and and abortion uh went away as a consequence of that but now republicans are going to be going against that narrative so aggressively with this move and if the democrats don't show that the republican rhetoric is actually what is divisive and what is violent through campaign ads and showcase that like trump's change of pace here is ultimately meaningless because what it spells for the country is genuinely damaging for our federal agencies and everything else, then, you know, it's, it's done. It's a done deal. Look, every dumbass in the chat, including Neek Skit, my favorite dumbass in the chat, goes, isn't it a good thing that Trump is more moderate? Maybe this horrible event is bringing our country together. Yeah, dude, I'm going to jiggle some keys later to grab your attention, okay? These are easily tricked adults. And unfortunately for many of us, there are so many of these dudes in the country Okay, so many, so many dudes in the country that is that are going to go, oh, maybe he did have a beautiful story. Everybody loves a beautiful story. This guy got shot at. He had a spiritual. I started uh, to cry reading that. Yeah, he, he, he got a spiritual, uh, you know, he reflected on his attitude. It's no, I'll be completely honest. It's a real thought that I had in my head. And I, but I'm, I'm conscious and aware of like the realities of politics now. But that's a real thought in my head. And when I have those real thoughts and feelings and emotions, I realize that most Americans don't have guardrails to protect themselves from believing in things when they see things. I mean, it's just, it, it's, uh, I don't know. We don't have any, if, if they don't change, if the Democrats don't change candidates, I, I, I think it's over big time, big time over. And I, oh. I feel so confident in that. And it's so perfect because like I tweeted this earlier this morning when the Democrats said like, oh, top uh, Democrats that were interested in taking Biden out of the race are now reconsidering that because they feel like it's not the right moment. It's not the right opportunity because, you know, the unity message is what's yeah. more important. Uh, top Democratic sources believe that Democrats who have thoughts about challenging President Biden are now standing down because of this fragile political moment. And to which I said, dropping out 
with a swift replacement would single-handedly change the narrative from Trump's martyrdom. Yes, and I called you this morning to yeah. talk about this. And it's crazy that they're just like, no, nah, we're not going to do it. It, does, it, it, it would, it, I mean, it, it wouldn't be good to ha have happen right now, but after the Republican National Convention, yes. swap out the candidates, it, yeah. would change, it would change the cycle. Th the Republicans would have no choice but to attack that candidate, and it would it, then we would sort of normalize the, the, the election cycle um, uh, again. I... Like, what do you mean unity? Like, that's the question I want to ask people. What do you mean unity? Unity uh, <laughs> under what exactly? Does that mean we're going to do like a like a Biden president, vice president Trump ticket? Like, is that what this yeah. is? Like, what do you mean unity? You, don't, you can't compromise on the rights of people, right? There's no half legal gay marriage. Well, I'll tell that to the <laughs> Democratic Party well, because I mean, they I'm, constantly. I'm trying to say is like that, that, but you can't do that. You Like, everybody's like, we meet in the middle. We need to meet in the middle. What? Meet in the middle on my rights, you son of a bitch? Yeah, you, I can't get married? No, no, we need unity. I can, I can get half married? Oh, we can. women can control half their bodies? It, it, there's no compromising on these issues. There's yeah. no middle ground on the issue. No, and, no, no, you don't understand. Unity means, like, instead of uh, deporting, instead of putting concentration camps, uh, building concentration camps, and, like, door-knocking operations in every Hispanic community in an effort to deport 20 million migrants, we do that to 10 million. Well, that's that's unity. That's unity between a knife and my back, okay? You want to put it all the way in. I say half measures is fine. Put it halfway in. Yeah, th yeah. There's, no, there's no compromising on the rights of people. There's just not. It, there's no compromising, and, and there's, no, there's no middle ground. It's either yeah. you, you give them rights or you deprive them. There's no middle ground of it, okay? So the, and that, that's why that's why it kills me when people come out and they're like, I'm a centrist and we should do both sides. No, motherfucker. There's no both sides of these arguments. It's so stupid. There's no both sides of yeah. these arguments. All right, let's hear what they're doing now. There they're still covering the, uh, the shooting now. There and was that, a likelihood that this, this long-range threat may present itself. So why? Also, the funniest part is that, yeah, by the way, thoughts and prayers are coming from the Democratic Party. Meanwhile, Republicans are literally, like, claiming that... Actually, this guy who his former classmates are saying was a Republican, who is a registered voter for the Republican Party, that guy actually shot Donald Trump because of the Democrats and their incisive, violent rhetoric against Donald they Trump. Literally, dude, fucking two years ago, he stood in front of the Capitol and told them to march on it. <laughs> and then they people like they broke the into the Capitol. Like, yeah. what do you... Yeah, no, it's just, no, 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 but he that was wasn't, right there. See, see, that wasn't violent. That wasn't violent rhetoric. You don't understand. Okay. That wasn't, it was three yeah. years ago, by the way, but that wasn't violent rhetoric. He was just, he was, he just wanted to kiss Nancy Pelosi. And when he was saying, hang Mike Pence, he was actually, he meant like, uh, Mike Pence is hung. Yeah. Like he has a big penis. That's what he was saying. Oh my God. I just, you, 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 he, he, he. oh my God. Anyway, well, the RNC see. right now, we do it on a day to day basis with you know, all of our protectees. The instructions, though, of what you're asking of those local law enforcement officers is extremely important. Right. What what type of general or post orders were given, uh, you know, specifically for that area to local law enforcement? The fact that you know, uh, an officer had to climb up to that roof and then saw that threat should never have happened. There should have been officers on the roof of the, those those buildings if they were, were within well, yeah. uh, that danger close uh, you know, proximity. <laughs> or, or at least that entire area should have been um, you know, uh, basically if cordoned off unity, and no one allowed near those buildings to even get up on it. For being a Again, woman. You, this is about you yeah. know, uh, reducing that risk. And focusing on the fact it's that women couldn't put their guns and in holsters. And you have to be able to eliminate you know, those threats and vulnerabilities right like away. Like there's DEI and, to and that's point, why... Uh, the this direction happened. to those local officers is absolutely essential, right? They have to know yeah. what they're expected yeah. to do if they see yeah. something suspicious. In this case, as soon as they received a report from an attendee that there was somebody on the roof, particularly at a report that may have included the fact that the person on the roof was seen with a gun, that has to be radioed in to the command post immediately so that the Secret Service can then alert the counter snipers or whoever mm. is responsible for, for uh, taking care of that threat. So, you know, we don't know if that even happened here. If their response was simply limited to, well, let's, you boost me up and I'll take a peek over the roof. One of the eyewitnesses who talked to Aaron Burnett uh, in the last hour was saying that they had engaged with local law enforcement saying there's a guy on the roof and the, the police, local police were saying where right. they were close to the building and therefore couldn't actually see what the people who were pointing to the guy could see because of the angle of, of the building. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a series of um, really unfortunate decisions. And had that 
had that property, that that uh, point of vulnerability been addressed initially by simply posting one officer on that roof or even putting drones up in the area to give you a kind of a real time feed of as to what's going on? You know, we'd ne we would not have been. And Speaker Johnson was pointing uh, talking about drones and hasn't gotten an, a an answer on that. And just in terms of the investigation, the fact we 26 hours now since this shooting, not much is really known, or at least publicly known so far, about this uh, this this gunman um, psychological history. Uh, I, would, I don't know if his father has cooperated yet with with law enforcement. He had told the media he he didn't want to talk to to them until he talked to law enforcement. I assume they've already interviewed him. There is a report that the FBI is trying to get in, access into his phone. How that's a difficult process, isn't it? It can be quite difficult. Crack somebody's with, phone. Yeah, with the security that we now have on personal devices and the encryption that that security brings, uh, it's not so simple as kind of brute forcing your way through a password as it may have been, you know, five, five or ten years ago. Uh, so if they are struggling to get past the combination I mean, of on, the, the device FBI's and the operating be able system, to do it. it's come both on. factors that make that challenging. Come on. That's why they. It would be extraordinary if this person of course they can chose to it. do this and there's no trail of. A diary, or a, you know, I don't want to say manifesto to give it more importance than it really is. A screeds write, writing They're in a journal in um, <laughs> like, or conversations with somebody. They're not just I mean, sitting there trying to like everybody the would FBI doesn't trail, sit there and put in the code. To and some like, degree, oh, fuck, we're a little hour. bit. Um, you know, they're already in desensitized the on this they're issue because like it is minutes, so common that probably. mass shooters leave <laughs> some sort of an effect. I don't understand. Why don't they just like take his finger and put it on the thing or just like put it over his face? I guess his face is like really fed up though. So that's oh, a good, that's an interesting point. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they can use their face. face. ID. Determined uh, through a multiple year investigation. I think it's likely that we'll learn more about what he was thinking about, maybe the sorts of searches he was conducting online. Hopefully, if he was interacting with other people and sharing his views, we'll the understand who those people Antifa. are and we'll have an opportunity to investigate them as well. <laughs> but you've got to get into those electronic devices first. Um, you've got to look very closely at things like social media. You've got to talk to family, friends, relatives, people who he interacted with at work. It's a slower process than 20. I mean, it takes longer than 26 yeah. hours. Uh, Andrew McCabe, Jonathan Wacker, thank you so thank much. You. Jake is back next with more of a look ahead to the convention. And later, presidential historian Doris Kearns Goodwin joins me ahead. This country has never been so divided. Wow. Are you a licorice lover or hater? Hell yeah, licorice. baby. Yeah. Country's divided on licorice. Oh, this is really funny. Elon Musk posted this. The New York Times just published this about Trump today. They're truly cows and despicable human beings, not a shred of empathy. The fail, the test of leadership. He failed the test of leadership and betrayed America. Voters must reject him in November. Like, like what, what do you mean? Like, you can't do ads against the president because he got shot at? Like, the former president who's running for office? Like, wh what are we talking about? It, it's like, well, oh, dude, no, sorry. Like, it has to be... No, no, hold on. Let them do fascism. They have. Jason they have said you play like special ed Draymond Green. Wait, what? No, he did not. That's far too complicated of a diss for him to come up with all on his own. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, as I was saying, like what? Oh, sorry. What's what's the what's the logical conclusion here? Okay, but that you know he just has to be president now. You can't say anything. Like you can you can run for president. You can run for president against the guy who got shot at, but you can't say anything. <laughs> like, you're not allowed to do campaign ads against the guy who just got shot at. If, the, if this you happened to Biden, Republicans would be running ads saying that Biden's gay or some shit. Yeah, he, you know, <laughs> and he's dude, Mexican. Republicans would be like, yeah, <laughs> dude, if liberals operated like, uh, if liberals <laughs> operated like the Republican Party, they would be saying that the dude who shot Trump is Trump's gay lover. <laughs> Okay, like, That's what, I'm what are yeah. we talking about? They'd be like, yeah, his gay mm -hmm. lover, his gay lover, who whom he had an affair with, <laughs> who had an affair with Obama. Yeah, and that's why there was a <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh man, did you did you hear? Actually, speaking of gay, did you hear Abraham Lincoln was gay? Yeah, of course, I've known that for. I know, but there's like a one documentary. Of my, one of my it. favorite facts. Yeah, I he know his bodyguard. Yeah, gay Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm dude, excited. Again, dude. DEI, gay bodyguard. That's why he got domed. They, 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 they hired a gay, they right. hired a gay guy right. to do his security. He was too busy sucking dick and he couldn't defend the president. That's what I'm saying, dude. He exactly. was exactly. He was just, <laughs> hey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Classic. Um, 
Anyway, no, this is such a funny thing. Uh, uh, like, I just, I love that Elon oh, he, Musk he said by, that. Oh, yeah, he was by bi, bi Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, by by visibility, Austin. Yeah, You're doing by invisibility again, dude. It's He never, he didn't have a chance to come out, I guess. Yeah, it's fucked up. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me tweet this real quick, because I think it's really funny. Did they funny. even, like, know what gay was back in the 1860s? Did they talk about it that much? I, I mean, I'm... I think they knew. Yeah, they were doing Abraham it. Abraham Twinkin. <laughs> Abraham Twinkin. That's awesome. There's a doc. Oh, them, them, not us. Okay, nice. <laughs> Abraham Twinkin. <laughs> Wait, is it just gonna be you, me, and 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 Lily? Should we have the Aussie boys on again? Uh, you, sure. We want. can have them on. You don't want to have them on. No, okay, of course like, I do. Oh. Righto. Yeah. Okay, okay. righto. I love okay. the Aussie boys. Right, boys. <sighs> His wifey was Mary. Um, in the 1960s, they studied homosexuality. Why'd you say it like a threat? 